Uh, good morning. I uh, have two items of news. <coughs> I'll give you the bad one first and the good one after. Uh, the bad one is that uh, I shouldn't really be here. Uh, my name is William Shea and I'm sure that you, most of you don't know uh, this name because I uh, have not had the privilege of working uh, within the framework. I, I am simply someone who uh, agrees entirely with the introduction that the Islamic heritage is a world heritage and it should be seen in that perspective. Uh, the good item, uh, I will not speak more than 18 minutes and what I will say will be known to all the scholars who are here and those of you who absolutely have to look up your emails or write them may feel free to continue. <laughs> what I will do is very briefly say a couple of words about general historiography and then uh, read part of my paper and after 18 minutes I will be cut off by Peter ruthlessly. In terms of uh, historiography, I would say that uh, the tone of voice of the introduction this morning by a gentleman who is the son of the great sheikh whom I met at the age of, uh, of the speaker, this is exactly the tone of voice that we should all take and imitate. It is meant as a statement of what is true. It is a reminder that if we fail to understand the Islamic heritage, we will not understand what happened in Europe. And there can be no doubt, I will I have had time to show you just one slide, to illustrate how important was the transmission of ancient knowledge and the stimulus to a greater development and that if this is forgotten, then we are all the poorer. Another aspect that is more troublesome is that it's part of history. And history, as alas we all know, is on the decline. Enrollment in departments of history in the UK and in the US, where we have clear statistics, is horrendous. Uh, the departments are being decimated. Less 25% is the safe statistic of the smaller the departments have become. Now this is a, a challenge and it is a very serious one and it's difficult to find remedies to this. Of course uh, people do not read and if they Twitter, it's only 140 words. But fortunately, we have people here who have understood the uh, serious problem and are moving towards exhibitions or creating artifacts, uh, using the media in a creative and innovative way. And I greatly admire Al Forkan and the Foundation for Science, History and Technology having embraced this way and I think with the help of the uh, experts that are in this room uh, this will go forward. So a lot has been done and we have just had a talk illustrating the enormous contribution that has been made to scholarship by the uh, team of Professor Ekmeridini Sanolu. Now, what I will, uh, in the remaining few minutes, I would like to simply bear witness to what uh, an outsider, if I may use that word, uh, has tried to become an insider by looking at what happened in the history of European culture. We all know that the very rapid spread of Islam following the Prophet's death marks a turning point in the history of Europe. 
and in not only in the Middle East. Various areas dominated by Islam had a large population of Jews, Christians, and pagans, and with a marvelous power of assimilation, Islam quickly created the necessary conditions for the rediscovery of Greek mathematics and science, and in the course of time added much of its own. Now what I want to underline here is the marvelous power of assimilation. The unifying principle was the Arabic language and the form used in the Quran, a role similar to the one of Sanskrit in India or medieval Latin in Western Europe. The most vigorous scientific activity of the early Middle Ages lay in the hands of the, the lands of the prophet, whether in medicine, mathematics, or astronomy. Islam also made original contributions to navigation in the Indian Ocean, and since the direction of the Mecca was important for religions, religions it led to the development of geopolitical coordinates. The Arab contribution to mechanics and engineering is of towering importance, and the historiography of science has now been greatly enhanced by the critical edition and English translation of the corpus of Ali Farari that we are honoring today. Until the 12th, 12th century, the intellectual contacts between Christian Europe and the Arab world were few and unimportant. That's an overstatement, but it captures, I think, the general atmosphere. They belong, I would say unfortunately, almost entirely to the age of the Crusades, but they owe little to the Crusaders who were not, most emphatically, not men of learning. Abelard of Bath visited Syria early in the 12th century, but we do not know that he carried any text away with him. North Africa had been Islamic since the 7th century, and although it boasted comparatively few schools of its own, it was the great highway between the East and Spain, the country that was to become the doorway to Islamic culture and science. The latter half of the 12th century, I, I obviously have the standard scientific uh, paper here, but I will give it for publication and I will try to concentrate on what is more relevant uh, uh, to, uh, to an audience that has not specialized in this matter. Um, the overall impact of Arabic is well illustrated in the scientific and commercial terms that various languages have borrowed untranslated from the Arabic words that are unknown to all of us, but uh, very few of my students are aware of this until I tell them. Words like algebra zero or cipher, that they tell their own tale, as do Arabic numerals from the word, word algorithm. Sorry. In astronomy, the same process is exemplified in almanac, zenith, nadir, azimuth, from the Arabic, we get alchemy and perhaps chemistry. And here my students pay attention when I mention the next word, alcohol. Not to mention many other pharmaceutical terms. In the field of trade and navigation, we have bazaar and tariff, admiral and arsenal. And the products of Islamic countries such as sugar and cotton, the Muslim of Mosul, and the Damask of Damascus, the leather of Cordoba and Morocco. Such common words of our vocabulary reveal whole chapters of human intercourse in the Mediterranean. I'm not an expert, I repeat, but I believe that the role played by Islam is of such importance that any person interested in the cultural history of Europe should have some idea of how much would have been lost if ancient Greek texts had not been saved in Arabic translation. Allow me briefly to show 
a small number of works that uh, were of ta paramount importance at the beginning of the rebirth of knowledge in Europe. Uh, here is something, of course, I mean, many of you will be able to uh, add, if you look at the 1001 inventions, you will find many more instances. I'm just giving this as an illustration. Uh, we can see the, the great importance of these works. See, they cover uh, astronomy, arithmetic, algebra, physics, uh, Apollonius, conics uh, would, uh, <laughs> if that had not been made available, uh, I'm very much afraid that we would not have had Kepler, for instance. I mean, these are very important texts, and the fact that they were made available. Of course, Archimedes uh, is uh, absolutely essential if we are to understand someone like Galileo, who considered himself a disciple of Archimedes. Euclid, can you imagine what uh, education would have been in Europe without, without Euclid? I mean, it, it simply is impossible to imagine what has occurred if we did not have these texts. And of course, in optics, we will be spending a, an important session on this. Um, I will mention here uh, an edition, I believe, by Rissner in 1577. The scholars here will tell me the exact year. Uh, this was a textbook that was made available of sources, and it became so important that it was read by virtually everyone who is at the origin of uh, modern science. Um, an instance is Descartes. We, we have the Dutch Snell's annotations. It's marvelous to have a text that was so famous and I think that should be also underlined. How did these ideas circulate? They circulated in translation, and in what edition, and who read it, uh, are important aspects. Of course, uh, Ptolemy's Almagest uh, need not be overemphasized. We see here the importance of Spain as a center of dissemination, and again, Ptolemy's. But there are many, many more and uh, I look forward very much to the next lecturers who will be able not only to add, but to correct anything I have said. Thank you very much. <laughs>